This is the BMW i7 and it's your relaxation room on wheels. It's your private theater on the go. It's a full power tech overload. And yeah, it's also BMW's EV sedan flagship. This love's gonna carry me to my the i7 is the all-electric version of the BMW 7 Series. Both models are built on the same platform and the i7 is where everything we like about the 7 Series meets the silence of an electric powertrain. Well, uh, if you think about it, the loudest thing on the i7 is its styling. Just check that front end. Split headlamps on a BMW and an even larger iteration of that ever-growing kidney grille, the designers have clearly thrown the style template out of the window to come up with the most rad-looking BMW limousine of all time. Love it or hate it, you just can't ignore it. Once the initial shock and awe subsides, there's a lot of finer details to take in. The upper daytime running light strips, for instance, are embellished with Swarovski crystals that gleam as you walk along them. A sporty bumper with a contrast black surround for the grille and main headlights adds more flash and there's no missing that grille even at night. It comes outlined by an LED strip. Iconic glow in BMW speak. The i7 is more conventional in profile. It's got a traditional 3-box shape shared with the petrol and diesel versions of the 7. The 5.4 meter long i7 has a stately air about it, a look helped by block like and flat surfacing all around. A high deck boot, wide sweeping tail lights, and a diffuser like element at the bumper lend the i7's rear end distinction too. The tailgate lifts to reveal a well shaped 500 liter boot, and there's a compartment under the floor too. But there's no spare tire, and also unlike many other EVs, the i7 doesn't offer any storage under its vast bonnet. Make what you want of the i7's design because you'd want to be on the other side of the doors. The interior tech experience starts before you're even inside. Powered doors. Those powered doors guarantee very cool entries and exits. Now the doors can be opened and closed on the inside via a button on the dashboard and a long press on the brake pedal will also automatically close the door for you. You can also open all four doors via voice commands. Now before you ask, there are sensors on the door, so if there's an obstruction or a hazardous exit, the doors won't open or will only open to a certain degree. I do have to tell you that as cool as these powered doors are, over the course of the day, I have found myself reverting to the manual door release, which is hidden slightly lower down. In look, this is a new age BMW interior with this twin screen layout, but this car has a 7 in its name, so everything is of the finest quality. There's soft touch materials everywhere, really high grade leather, and also quite a few crystalline elements that you'd find on the seat adjust, the iDrive controller, and even on the dashboard. Now it is slightly polarizing, some might find it over the top, some really classy. What adds genuine wow appeal to this interior is the lighting. There's 15 color ambient lighting and each theme has its own mix of colors. There's lighting on the roof too. There are some quirks and features packed in too. If you look at the dashboard, you'll find that there are no AC vents in sight and that's because they're concealed behind this panel. Still, cooling is really effective and you can adjust the vents via this rubberized switch lower down. There's a temperature control on the touchscreen's home screen itself, but for anything more, even blower control, you'll need to go into the climate menu. As for the touchscreen, it's a 14.9 inch unit that is again very slick to use, very responsive to touch inputs and what also helps functionality is the option to use the iDrive controller. You can also use gesture commands and this screen is also your display for the 360 degree cameras. 
The other screen up front is for the instruments. The digital dials are really, really high grade. It's a high contrast screen, so you can read it in all manners of lights. It packs in all sorts of features. Every theme has its own layout and you can further adjust it to your liking. There is head up display as well, but the coolest feature to me here is AR. Now what that does is it superimposes direction arrows on a camera feed so you really can't miss the right turn. The only catch is it works only with the onboard navigation system and not with Google Maps. Those sat up front have it good on comfort too. The seats are large and supportive, adjustable in multiple ways and get all the comforts you'd expect. But the best seats in the house are the ones at the back. This is a luxury limousine, so of course the seats you'd want to be on are the ones at the back. Just check out the room I have, check out the space to the front seats. Now the seats are superbly cushioned and also pack in all manners of creature comforts. There's massage, there's ventilation and there's heating as well. But for the full experience, you want to be on this seat, the one I'm on that we popularly call the boss seat that offers a full extension. The whole process takes about 40 seconds and transforms the seat into a business class throne. This is how you'd want to move about. To nitpick, I just wish the back seat offered a few more degrees of recline. That would have made it absolutely perfect. On the plus side, the i7's battery pack under the floor is slim at 110 mm and what that means is the floor is no higher than a standard 7 series. So with the seats in their stock position, you don't get that EV typical knees up seating. All your seat settings, the controls for the blinds, the ambient lighting, etc, etc are packed into this 5.5 inch touchscreen on the door. And it's not the only screen that you'll find inside the back of the i7. Your very own 31 inch screen. The screen natively runs eSIM based Amazon Fire TV, but it wasn't configured on our test car. You can also plug into a device via an HDMI port and I used a Fire Stick to watch YouTube and Netflix. You won't find content to fit the full screen given the unusual aspect ratio, but you can zoom in. You also have the option to move the screen fore and aft for your comfort and it's adjustable for angle too. An 18 speaker Bowers & Wilkins sound system that includes speakers integrated into the headdress make the viewing experience all the more immersive. Drivers, however, will frustratingly find their view out the rear view mirror completely blocked by the screen. Jaguar like digital mirrors would have done the trick. With the static intro done, let's get moving. First thing of note, ride comfort. Ride comfort is really, really well judged. It softens the blow of the worst of our roads so, so effectively. And when you are going faster, it doesn't wallow or float like you'd expect a big limousine to. And what that means is that you won't feel nauseous when you're watching your favorite movie on the go. Or maybe it's just me. I don't think that big screen in such close proximity will be for everyone. If not your theatre on the go, the i7 sure offers a serene setting to reconnect with your thoughts. Of course, this is an electric car, so you don't really hear much of the powertrain. But on the whole, sound insulation is just spectacular. You're totally cut off from the world outside, so you can actually meditate in here. What the silence does hide is the other facet of the i7's personality, speed. Oh. <laughs> So you might not hear it, but you will feel this car's performance in your gut. A quick getaway will yield a sports car like 4.5 seconds 0 to 100 kph time and kickdown acceleration is mega as well. The source of that performance is a pair of electrically excited synchronous motors, one at each axle, that produce a combined 544 horsepower and 745 newton meters. That's supercar part, but then the i7 also tips the scales at a road crushing 2640 kgs. On the odd occasion you want to take the wheel, I'd advise you to take over from your chauffeur only outside city limits. 
because driving the big and heavy i7 in town can be nerve-wracking. U-turns need planning even with the standard fit four-wheel steering that adds in 3.5 degrees of rear steering lock. You'll also have to work in the 3.2 meter wheelbase and 136 millimeters of ground clearance into route plans. The i7 doesn't scrape on speed breakers as often as an EQS, but you have to still take it slow. A suspension lift function adds in a crucial 20 mm of clearance and thankfully the shortcut to the feature is the physical button in easy access at the center console. You'll also need to make full use of the 360 degree cameras when parking the i7. However, there is tech to make this bit of living with an i7 easier. So let's say you have a very tricky path to your office parking lot and uh, you don't want to deal with the stress of maneuvering it through these tight turns on a daily basis. So what you do is make the car memorize your route and then save it and when you're in position just click on it and let the tech do everything. Maneuver Assistant memorizes up to 200 meters of vehicle trajectory into a parking and can subsequently do the job of automatically steering, accelerating and braking the car into a slot when you need it to. It works superbly over the convoluted route to our office parking. And there we go. It's on wide open roads that the i7 comes into its own. This is a properly, properly brisk car, but because you're cocooned from the outside world so well, the i7 masks its speed and more often than not, on an empty patch of road, you'll be going faster than you think you are. And I'm talking of the car in its most mundane setting. Switch it to sport and your journey will get a whole lot more exciting. Throttle responses become sharper and there's a greater urgency all around. But you also have a boost mode, which is activated by a tug at the paddle on the steering wheel. And what this does is it gives you 10 seconds of all that the motors have to offer. So here goes. <laughs> this is properly, properly fast. And the effect is similar to what NOS does to a super tuned car. What will also keep you entertained are the sounds the i7 makes. The BMW i7 packs in sound profiles that have been composed by noted Hollywood composer Hans Zimmer. And he has a very different take to what EVs should sound like. Now let's try expressive mode. It's like having a violinist giving the soundtrack for your drive experience. Sport mode gives you a more traditional sound, more in line with what you probably hear at a planetarium. The sounds add a layer to the otherwise polished driving experience. There's a nice weight at the steering, there's a good feeling of connect and as you'd imagine, you can carry big speeds with big confidence. The i7 doesn't forget that at the end of the day, there's a BMW in its name as well. Even the regen brakes are very nicely tuned and you can choose the level of regen to your liking. It's just that you don't get paddles for that as you do on many other EVs. It's a two-step process, so you have to first go into a mode menu and then select it. And I think it should have been a more straightforward process. To be fair, you won't really feel the need to shuffle through the settings all that often. Adaptive regen mode does a fine job of judging regen levels for the conditions. There are a whole host of ADAS features on board too, and they work well on well-marked roads. Noticed in all this while, I haven't mentioned the battery or range. That's because range or the lack of it isn't something you'd have to think about often, and it shouldn't be. The i7 uses a huge 101.7 kilowatt lithium ion battery pack. In our test, the i7 delivered a range of 396 kilometers in town and 489 kilometers on the highway. The figures will easily meet the requirements of most typical owners. The i7 supports DC charging up to 195 kilowatt, but it's likely the complimentary 22 kilowatt AC charger BMW provides with the car will be the one that owners will make most use of. A full 0 to 100% charge with the said charger takes 5 hours.
The decision to go for an all-electric limousine is as much about luxury as it is about making a statement. It's about establishing yourself as a forward thinker ready to embrace a new world of electric mobility. The BMW i7 has you covered on both fronts. It's everything you want of a limousine, an opulent interior, first-rate comfort, loads of tech and ample power, and also packs in a politically correct image delivered by its green number plates. The polarizing styling means the i7 is not a car conservative buyers will take to readily and then there's the matter of price. At 1.95 crore rupees ex showroom, the i7 X Drive 60 is pricey even by full size luxury sedan standards. More so when you see the fully imported i7's pricing in light of its closest competitor. Mercedes's locally assembled EQS 580 that comes in at 1.59 crore rupees. Even so, there's no taking away from the fact that the i7 is a superb addition to the EV scape. It's an indulgence that's got a virtuous side too. Feel good factor, the i7 aces it.